Right, we are back with the self-powering uh, diesel heater project again. Last time, we kind of had a discussion where we thought that the hot side wasn't getting hot enough. Some people thought the cool side wasn't cool enough, but the well, it's got a water block on it and the temperature of the water, it's well, we started at like 20 degrees and got to 26 after running, so I dare say that side's still at 20 degrees. But we didn't know what temperature the hot side was hot at. So I have taken the uh, long probe, the 1000 degree rated one, out of the end of the burn chamber. Um, we're going to poke it inside the uh, aluminium box. I don't know what we really call it, the heat transfer unit. And you will notice that I have wrapped it in insulation. I found some Kingspan type stuff out in the... Uh, other workshop, uh, you know, that stuff, the pot, the steam stuff we wrapped the lavender water heat up, uh, water heater up in. So I have surrounded all of that, all of the sides except the water block side, and well, it's just a matter of firing up now, seeing what temperature we get, and seeing what voltage uh, we get out of the thing. So I shall bring you back once it is up and running and at temperature and I might even get the flare out and have a pan around and see what temperature things are so I'll bring you back once it's running. Well we've been running for a little while now and as you can see we've got 3.8 volts out of the three tags. The core temp, not the core temperature sorry, the temperature of the, I've managed to get a wire wrapped around the thing, hold on, that makes more sense. So if I touch the inside of the inside of the box, the rear inside of the box next to the tags, it's about 228 degrees on the surface. And if I kind of float the exhaust, float the probe around the exact the the actual exhaust gas hitting the end of the probe is a lot hotter. I think I saw 260, maybe more. That's basically the exhaust stream coming out of the heater. My hand's getting really hot now because it's right next to the exhaust hole. Anyway, the exhaust is really hot. The exhaust gas, sorry. And it's hitting the box and it is imparting heat out in the box. But we're still only getting 4 volts out of 3 tags. Right, I'm going to turn this off until uh, we discuss it further. Turn off, right. Uh, people were all asking why I didn't connect anything up as a load because we're, well, basically we're only getting 4 volts so this little uh, DC to DC buck boost converter it won't even turn on until you get to 5 volts so you plug it in nothing happens anyway because it needs 5, vol 5 volts to run it and basically the 5 volts, uh, well 5 volts isn't enough it's not enough to do anything we want to do it with we need at least 14 volts to charge a battery because if we don't have 14 volts we can't get past the internal resistance of the battery and we can't impart any current into it to charge it. So a lot of you uh, suggested that we build a new box that's got heat sink fins on the inside, more cooling fins and cooling stuff on the water block as well to get the cool side even cooler and and, and, and hold on, wait till, I, wait till I show you this bad boy. So our viewer, David, uh, the David that sent us the tags, he has made this. Ah, there's a fucking fin sticking in my finger. Oh, they're sharp, watch out for them. So what we have here is the exhaust cast coming in through this manifold, being split off into three branches, three branches, one for each of the tag modules that are under there. This is the exhaust outlet, and if we peer inside, can you peer inside? Can you see there are the fins that are on, well it's like a heat sink, onto where the tags are mounted to try and transfer even more heat energy. So your exhaust comes in, in through here, in, the, in there, in that bit. Hits the internal structure of the heat sink with the fins, imparting the heat hopefully into the hot side of the tag and then the cold side of the tag has the water cooler block and even more additional cooling fins. Uh, so we're going to set this up and well as we've seen 
I added all this insulation to this box and it made not a blind bit of fucking difference to the amount of voltage or what we got out of it. So, I am, um, for the meantime, not going to bother insulating any of this. We are going to run it and see what voltage we get out of it. We're not going to use the FLIR because the fucking battery's flat and I don't have a USB-C charger in here or well, anywhere that I can find. I thought I did have, but hey, we're out in the workshop. It's not really a place for USB-C uh, type things to be. So we're going to rip all of that stuff off of there just now, plumb all of this back in, and then we're going to run the test again. And we're going to see what voltage we get out of uh, David's beautiful, beautiful setup here and see if we can improve what we've got. So I'm going to tidy all this off and plumb all that back in and bring you back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have plumbed in uh, David's fantastic creation here. Got it well, running, obviously. Exhaust plumbed in, water cooler's plumbed in, and look, we've got slightly over six volts. It's kind of slowed down now. It was, I was continuing to climb and climb and climb, but it's now slowly climbing. So I might still get further and further up there. Using the probe temperature thing, I've got about 96 degrees in that one. 94, 93. Slightly less in the outliers, because obviously mo the majority of the exhaust hitting the middle one and going straight down the middle. And it's also, and then the other two kind of, but it's not wildly far away. So that was 90, this one's coming back up slowly. What did I say, 95? Well, they're not a million miles away from each other. So with this hat now having over 6 volts, we could try wiring in the uh, DC-DC conver converter. See if it'll light up a little light bulb, perhaps? Alright, let's uh, plug this in then. We've got... we've got... Oh, fucking zoom you in a bit, hold on. Wait a minute, god damn it. Zoom. Right, something like that. Good luck, keep that in shot, David. So we've got a voltage in of six and a bit volts. And can we have a voltage out? Does that do twiddling these things even? I would have thought I would have at least got the same voltage out as I could get in. Can I get does this does this do anything? Does this work at all? I've twiddled that round more than I'm fairly sure that should have ever twiddled round. So something on this does not fucking work a jot. Great. Oh so that appears to be totally broken. Ah Next question, will six volts light up a twelve volt light bulb? Does it even light up a little bit? No. <laughs> no, even a little bit. Right, okay. Oh! Oh, look, look! Illumin illumination! Wait. Zoom! It's lighting up the 12 volt light bulb. Now, now that we've got it to light up a bulb, that means it's actually producing current. Uh, I'm going to go and find my uh, current clamp mirror. Zoom out again. So, this, this um, doesn't appear to work anymore, sadly. The twiddly bit seems to have ceased twiddling. Yeah, that bit not twiddling him. Well, it twiddles. It twiddles too much. Right, clamp me up. Man, he's just to find it as he stops filming. Right, clamp me up. Let's set this to... Let's go... We'll start at 2 amps. Uh, 2 amps. DC. We'll zero it out. 
and we will clamp around one of the things. So we are currently producing, uh, for you guys to see on the screen, just uh, a kick under 240 milliamps. Wait, I need to maths this one out. Did I say 6 volts? Where are my probs? Is it still 6 volts? They wrapped around everything. Yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, I should still be able to stab down the middle of these and get a voltage reading. Commence stabbing. So 5.8 volts. Oh, I've got them around the wrong way. That's all right. right 5.8 volts. 250 milliamps. Somebody write that shit down. Okay, I have the clamp meter plugged in and the voltmeter. So 5. 5.8 volts and 0.24 amps. Uh, power equals current times voltage. So 0.234 multiplied by 5.88 gives us 1.37, 1.38 watts. 1.4, I'm being generous, 1.4 watts. One and a half watts. Right, quiet, silence, silence, shh, hush. Turn you off a minute. Ah, the beautiful Scottish weather. I don't know if you can hear the rain bouncing off the roof, and I mean bouncing. Well, what have we learned? Well, we've learned that 300 pounds worth of tags, and probably an ungodly number of manners to make this beautiful setup to get one and a half watts out of it at six volts in usable uh, power. That's. That's a hell of a fucking expensive way to do things. And I know some of you are probably now going to say, oh, you need to insulate all those pipes and insulate and insulate. Uh, insulate. It's not going to make a fucking that much. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think insulation is going to make 10 times the power out of that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not happening. I mean, the, the box the, where the tags are mounted, it's insulated. It's got insulation around the... Thing. It's just not insulated on this plate, which, well, it's, it's warm, but it's not hot, hot. No, hot like them. Yeah, I touched them. They're, they're hot. <laughs> so, God, 300 and that, and yeah, lots. So that's a lot of money to spend. Thankfully, we didn't have to spend it, or I didn't have to spend it. It was not donated, but it's borrowed, because I'll have to send it back at some point. But... Yeah, okay, so that's... we're going to go with no on that. That that didn't really work. Another viewer, Martin, has sent us in another six uh, cheap TEG modules. I looked on Amazon, these ones are about £7 each, as opposed to £100 each of the big uh, versions. So I thought perhaps for our next attempt at doing something, we could, uh, as people suggested, we build like a triangular. Wait, let me just make a bad, bad version of. Yeah, let's do bits of these. Like we get two bits of aluminium, and we weld them together, and not this size obviously, but the same size that matches the tags, and then put three on this side, three on our side, and then just insulate the bottom, and have the exhaust come in and go out the other end. And then we could obviously try to put fins on the inside to try and maximise the uh, contact area of the exhaust. Because I think that's probably going to be the what made that generate more electricity was the fins on the inside of the heat, ex the, well, it is a heat exchanger, on the inside of the heat exchanger, which allowed more heat to be transferred into the tags. So if we can do that, uh, I might buy some cheap... Uh, you know, 
heat sinks, that's what I was looking for. Heat sinks to either stick on or weld on if I can on the inside and on the outside we've got, well, if if I'm allowed to disassemble uh, this setup, I could steal the two water blocks and put them on the outside and just loop them into each other and kind of attach them to keep the outside of the tegs cool. Failing that, I'll just buy more heat sinks to stick onto the back of these and we'll just uh, see how convection cooling helps uh, do that. And let's see what we get with that using cheap tegs and cheap parts and see if we get any different, better, worse results than uh, the really, really expensive ones, especially if we're dividing up like pound for pound, like six, seven, it's like, so that's like 42 pounds worth of tags as opposed to 300 pounds worth, and if we get, well, hey, should we do a sort of a, a voltage, a volt, volt per pound <laughs> setup, or a volt per, or pound per amp, per, per, per watt? We could do per watt, so as soon as we got one and a half watts for 300 pounds, how many watts can we get for like 50 pounds? Then that'll be uh, interesting to see. And and so as as always, if you have any suggestions or thoughts or comments or anything that we could do for our next video to improve our um, setup, please leave them down below or send me an email or fuck if you want to send me stuff as well, send me an email and. Well, I'll give you my address now, we'll organise, you can send me things, anything you want me to try, uh, that kind of stuff, and hopefully next time we'll, well, we might get the same results, but we might get something different, at least it'll have been a cheaper endeavour next time, hopefully. So, as always, thanks for watching.